Hello and welcome to the books mo uh, book station. Um, so I realised that I haven't done a proper book haul for about two weeks. I mean there was an unboxing of the Miss Peregrine's box set but that was really it. So I'm here today with a book haul. I have ten books to show you. So I'm just going to get started. So the first book I have to show you is Slasher Girls and Monster Boys. Pardon me, I'm a bit late to the party because this was published in like October or something, um, but I have it now, I've heard it's brilliant, so I just thought I'd still pick it up. Um, so this is a collection of short horror stories written by really famous YA authors. So they're stories by Stefan Barkman, Kendall Blake, Jay Kristoff, Jonathan Mabry, Carrie Ryan, Nova Rensuma, April Genevieve Tahoki, Lee Bardugo, A.G. Howard, Marie Lou, Danielle Page, Megan Shepherd. McCormick Templeman and Cat Winters and this is just gorgeous and like I said it's um yeah it's a collection of short horror themed stories by famous YA authors so I got that the next thing I got was the um every man's library bind up of um Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials, so this is all three books. Northern Lights, Subtle Knife and Amber Spyglass in a gorgeous hardback bind up. It's amazing, look at that spine. It's just gorgeous. And this also has a ribbon bookmark, which is nice. Um, yeah, so I've never read His Dark Materials, but I've seen The Northern Lights. Was it The Northern Lights, the film that they made? Um, and that was a pretty good film, I enjoyed that. But yeah, I've always wanted to read this um, trilogy, so I thought I would get the be this beautiful edition. And it's going to look gorgeous on my shelf. But I just think it's absolutely stunning, I love this edition. Okay, the next book I picked up was The Bazaar of Bad Dreams by Stephen King. This is a collection of short stories from him. Um, I don't read much Stephen King, but I would like to. I mean, I have a few of the I have a few of of his other books. I'm just thinking. I'm just trying to see how many short stories are in here. Okay, there's twenty short stories in here. <clears throat> um, yeah. And I believe they're all a bit creepy, well, because it's Stephen King, they will be a bit creepy. And they all centre around, like, dreamscapes and stuff, I believe. But this cover's gorgeous, and, yeah, I just heard really good things about this. I then got um, Railhead by Philip Reeve, which is gorgeous. Look at this. How awesome is that? And also, under the dust jacket, it's this, like, futuristic silver... And it's just beautiful. And this is a sci-fi novel. I'm not sure what it's about, but it's about a guy called Zen Starling. Uh, yeah. But I'm not sure what it's about. But I think this is Philip Reeve's first sci-fi. Uh, YA sci-fi. On the back it says, Meet Zen Starling. Rebel, adventurer, imposter, liar, hero, enemy, ally, destination, unknown. And they all spell out railhead. But yeah, I thought it sounded good, and it's got a gorgeous cover, and it's beautiful under the dust jacket, and oh, just hit myself in the face with uh, a book. And yeah, I think that's awesome too. But yes, I'm excited for this, I love sci-fi, so should be a good time. I then picked up a Darren Shan book, uh, this is The Thin Executioner. Yes, I used to have this. But it was in a really tall paperback, and I didn't like the format. I tried to read it in that format, and I, I just hated it. So I saw the hardcover for a pound. So I picked this up. I'm not sure what it's about. It's about a guy called Jebel, or Jebel. In a harsh, unforgiving world of slavery and glorified execution, one boy's humiliation leads him to embark on a perilous quest to the faraway lair of a mysterious god. It's a dark, brutal, nightmarish journey which few have ever survived. But to Jabel Rum, the risk is worth it. To retrieve his honour, to win the hand of the girl he loves, to wield unimaginable power, and to become the thin executioner. So I thought it sounded really good. 
And like I said, I prefer this format to the one I had. <clears throat> I then picked up Soundless by Rochelle Mead, who is the author of Vampire Academy and Bloodlines. Um, but this is a standalone fantasy about a girl who lives in this world in China or something. It says, in a mysterious... I'll read you the back because it's not very long. Um, For as long as Faye can remember, there has been no sound in her village. Her people are at the mercy of a mysterious faraway kingdom which delivers food in return for precious metals mined from the treacherous cliffs surrounding them. When villagers begin to lose their sight, their rations shrink and many go hungry. Faye's home, the boy she loves, and her entire existence are plunged into crisis under threat of darkness and starvation. Until one night, Faye is awoken by a searing noise and sound becomes her weapon. So it sounds really good. And it's a standalone YA fantasy, which you don't see many of. And I've heard mixed things, but I'm looking forward to it. It's very short, so should be a good time. I then picked up The Haunting of Sunshine Girl by Paige McKenzie. This is a web series on YouTube. I'm not sure what it's about. I've never watched any of the videos, but it's like a horror. Um, I've heard the book and the web series are similar to like Paranormal Activity. I like Paranormal Activity up to number three, where it just got a bit ridiculous. So I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. But I picked it up. It's quite short, so I'm looking forward to it. It does say on the back, in that place where you're more asleep than awake, I hear something. A phrase uttered in a child's voice, no more than a whisper. Night, night. Ooh. I then picked up Illuminae by Jay Christoph and Amy Kaufman. I've heard exceptionally good things about this, and the format is just awesome. It's like, there's some like email conversations and there's like blueprints and stuff in here as well and it just looks awesome and I know it's about apparently it's quite difficult to explain but it's about like okay I'll read you the back it might make more sense the year is 2575 and two mega corporations are at war over a planet that's little more than an ice covered speck too bad nobody thought to warn the people living on it when enemy fire raining with enemy fire raining down on them Ezra and Katie have to make their escape on the evacuating fleet, but their troubles are just beginning. <clears throat> a deadly plague has broken out on one of the spaceships and it's mutating with terrifying results. Their ship's protection is seriously flawed. No one will say what is going on. As Katie hacks into a tangled web of data to find the truth, it's clear that only one person can help her, Ezra, and the only problem with that is they split up before all this trouble started and she isn't supposed to be talking to him. So it sounds really good. And again, another sci-fi which I love. The next book I picked up is Steelheart by Brandon Sanderson. I've heard good things about this. It's about like these superheroes called epics, but everybody fears them. They're actually trying to do good, but everybody fears them. And then something happens and there's this one most evil boss epic called Steelheart. And somebody wants to kill him, I believe. But it sounds really good. And I've heard a lot of good things about Mr. Sanderson, so I thought I would give it a shot. And it's not that long. So, yeah. Sounds pretty good. And then the last book I picked up. Like, this cover gave me kind of like murder mystery vibes, but I'm not sure it's about that. I think it's more of a horror. But anyway, this is The Woman in Silk by R.J. Gadney. And it says, Captain Hal Sterling has flown to England from Afghanistan after a roadside bomb renders him battered and broken. Once home, he retreats to his ancestral family seat of Stirling Towers, a gothic mansion that dominates the landscape near the remote Scottish borders for a Christmas of quiet recuperation. But on arrival, he discovers that his mother, a fantastical spiritualist, has died and been hastily buried. Isolated from the insular local community, Howe finds himself at the mercy of his mother's two mysterious nurses, the harshest winter on record, and before long, the horrific visions, experiences he attributes to his heavy medication. Yet as the December weather deteriorates, so does Hal's certainty that his home is a place of safety. Who or what is trying to frighten him to death? So it's kind of a murder mystery, but it's more about the son Hal and him being like, 
plagued by visions and trying to figure out where these visions are coming from. But the cover is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, look at that house, proper creepy. And the lake with the... Oh, uh, so beautiful. But yeah, it sounds really good. So I thought I'd give it a shot. So yeah, that is my book haul. It's quite a lot of books. But then I have been... Haven't done a book haul for two weeks, so that's expected. Um, <clears throat> I haven't done much reading lately, but that's because work has been super busy because we've been building up to the Christmas break, uh, which has now started. So for a couple of weeks, I'm able to just chill out and read, which is what I'm hoping to do and get a few more books finished because I haven't finished a book for a while. So yeah. So there you go. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wish, you may subscribe. <clears throat> Talk to me about any of the books that I showed you today or any books in general. I'll always answer your comments um, and I will see you very soon. Goodbye. And if I don't see you before, which I doubt, have a wonderful Christmas. But I think I'm going to see you before anyway. So, yeah. See you later.